please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Welcome back. You are still with India Business Hour Plus. Now on to markets. Uh, the last street saw a good follow-up to yesterday's stellar rally with all indices ending at over one week high level. So the Nifty, for instance, rallied half a percent with financials contributing over half of index gains. Sensex rallied over 100 points. Banks slightly outperforming with gains of about 200 points. Mid-caps were the clear star of today's trading action. As you can see on your screen, that index jumped about 250 points today. The stock of the day was Bandhan Bank after it saw a stellar listing on its first day on the Lal Street. The new entrant saw its shares jump 33% soon after opening for trade. Chandrasekhar Ghosh, the MD and CEO of Bandhan Bank, told CNBC TV18 that they want to continue to lend more to the MSME segment to expand the business. We added the steady growth on that, trying on that, to reaching to the more people across the country focusing on that core of our expertise and the need also the people in the microcredit right. along with MSME which is which is the beyond microfinance and below the corporate we should like to also gradually uh, serve in that segment because there is a need of this type people serve the money well, the big story now from Deal Street Pharma major GlaxoSmithKline is set to acquire Novartis' stake in their consumer healthcare joint venture. GSK is buying 36.5% stake in the JV from Novartis for $13 billion. Now, in its statement, GSK said that it is also initiating a strategic review of Holix and its other consumer healthcare nutrition products to support funding of this transaction. Archana Shukla now joins us with more. Archana, take us through the fine print of GSK's plan. Uh, well, it's just a week after it pulled out of the $20 billion bid to acquire Pfizer's consumer business. GSK has now pitched this $13 billion buyout of the consumer healthcare JV that it has with Novartis since 2014. And to fund such a large transaction, GSK is intending to sacrifice its oldest nutrition drink brand, Horlicks, which is almost its full India business. Uh, the company is initiating a strategic review of Horlicks and other consumer nutrition products and also an assessment of GSK's 72.46% shareholding in the Indian listed uh, consumer subsidiary. The idea is to slowly increase focus on OTC portfolio and brands like that of Sensodyne, uh, Eno, or Trivin, etc. in India as well as globally. Now, for GSK Global, consumer health, uh, you know, contributes nearly 26% to revenues. And of this, India contributes over 80%. So of the FY17 total revenues of 5,050 crores, roughly, India consumer healthcare contributed nearly 4,400 crores. So you can see uh, the, the importance there. And for India consumer business, the health food drinks category, which is Horlicks uh, and Boost brands and others, uh, biscuits and uh, foodles, are the cash cow and they contribute nearly 90% to revenues. Now, with a uh, you know, the next chart that comes up on your screen shows the market share with a 56% market share. Horlicks and Boost together are leaders in the $1.1 billion malt-based drink space in India. This segment has seen some headwinds post-demonetization, but analysts say if Horlicks comes up on the block, companies like Danone, who have been increasing scale in this space, or even Nestle that still has to make an entry, could be interested in picking up the legacy brands. The result of the strategic review will be uh, out by end 2018, and GSK has clarified that there is no assurance that it will result in any transaction. We'll bring you every single update in this deal going forward. Back to you. India remains a priority market for this company, um, whether that be for uh, our non-nutrition brands, where we still see an opportunity for growth, brands like Sensodyne and Eastern, but also very particularly for pharma uh, and vaccines. And we just quite recently announced uh, a new build uh, in Vemgal and Kana Saka, which is uh, really important for us. So I, I think it's absolutely critical for all of our uh, Indian businesses and partners to understand how vested we are in the market and its potential. 
That's the big global story of the day. But uh, here's what you need to watch out for tomorrow. SEBI will be holding a crucial board meeting tomorrow. We learn that the market regulator may be imposing a trading ban on companies that are undergoing insolvency proceedings. But that's not the only item on their agenda. Yash Chen is here with the details. Yash, what else can we expect from the board meeting tomorrow? Any specific announcements? Well, the last heavy board meeting for the financial year 2018 and the most important aspect would be any discussion or amendment as far as the insolvency and bankruptcy vertical is concerned. We are given to understand that SEBI is likely to consider a proposal with respect to bringing a trading ban on companies which go under insolvency and bankruptcy. Of course, it has been a popular demand from various players, but now it seems to be catching the eye of the regulator as well. Also, what I'm given to understand is that SEBI might consider the proposal of bringing some relaxation as far as the minimum public share holding of 25% is concerned for companies which go under IBC and letting the new promoter, the incoming promoter hold and infuse more than 75% equity in these companies is concerned and this is to ensure an effective turnaround of these sick companies. As far as the delisting of these companies which go under IBC is concerned, we are given to understand that SEBI might prove uh, some relaxation there as well with respect to the reverse book building procedure which is a part of the delisting norm. Uh, coming to the next important point which is with respect to the regulations on non-compliance of the listing uh, requirements, we are given to understand that SEBI might give more powers to exchanges to essentially freeze the promoter shares in these companies which do not comply with listing regulations. Also, if there is a continuation which happens as far as non-compliance is concerned, then exchanges might might also be given the powers to initiate delisting process for these companies. The third and the most important would be the whole buyback uh, setup which we have. SEBI is looking to put a cap as far as how much of quantum can be offloaded in buyback. That is uh, expected to come around 25% and also it is looking uh, to put a time interval between two successive buybacks from a same company which we'll have to see what is the time interval and which means that the company won't be able to come up with a successive buyback in that period of time. Thanks a lot to Yash for that. Uh, now, the terms of reference for the 15th Finance Commission have the southern states up in arms. Now, they believe that uh, as per the 2011 census, as the data for devolution of tax revenue from centre to the states will hurt their interests. Now, the government has tried to allay those concerns uh, raised by these states, indicating that there is flexibility in the census data that can be used. Now, a government official tells CNBC TV18 that while the primary criteria is the 2011 census, the commission is free to use data from 1970. But regarding concerns on the terms of reference in the finance, 15th Finance Commission, I beg your pardon, the official said that they are fair and balanced and will not need further clarification. Regarding states that have controlled population using incentives and feel that leaves them disadvantaged with tax devolution, the Finance Commission may look at performance-linked incentives for those states. Well, time now for another short break, but up next, Maruti Suzuki may have deferred its plan to launch its first fully hybrid vehicle. Why? We answer that question on the other side of this short break. Welcome back to India Business Hour Plus. Now onto a CNBC TV 18 exclusive. India's largest car maker, Maruti Suzuki, has put its plans of launching the S Cross on the back burner. Earlier, the company was planning to launch the S Cross, its first fully hybrid vehicle, in 2019. So, what prompted them to do a rethink? Utkarsh Atwedi is with us. Utkarsh, what exactly went wrong here, and does this mean that they are completely giving up on their plans to launch? hybrid vehicles. So, Kritika, automakers have been waiting for a long time when it comes to a tax cut on hybrid vehicles and it was a matter of time before one of them rethinks their strategy. Now, what we are picking up is that Maruti Suzuki has held the plan of its first fully hybrid vehicle, the S-Cross, which was codenamed YGB and was supposed to be launched in 2019. The RFQs for the same vehicle was floated by the company and has been cancelled is what we are picking up from multiple sources. Also, the current vehicles which have the micro-hybrid technology like the Ertiga, CRs and also the current model of S-Cross is also under the radar. Marty will be relaunching the CRs and Ertiga with newer engines later this year and is still contemplating whether to continue the hybrid models in the same or not. The reasons are plain and simple. 
An increase in the taxes of hybrid vehicles has resulted in a slump in sales. And what top management individuals in companies suggest us is that to make money in high tax, in such high tax on hybrid is not possible. But automakers, however, are still hopeful and have been raising their concerns to the government, which till now has not resulted in anything concrete. And till then, you can expect more car makers to put their hybrid plans on the back burner. With that, it's back to you. Well, thanks a lot, Utkarsh, for that. Uh, now, staying with the Motown, New Delhi has become the first region to roll out the BS6 fuel uh, days ahead of the scheduled date. The centre had advanced the BS6 rollout in Delhi to April 1st, 2018, instead of 2020, in an attempt to reduce air pollution. So what do the citizens of Delhi think about it? Well, Anshu Sharma uh, finds out. Kalyan Marg, right opposite the Prime Minister Narendra Modi's resident at the BPCL and HPCL fuel pump. Uh, if you remember last year in November 2017, uh, the pollution levels in Delhi increased to an alarming levels. Oil Ministry stepped in and announced availability of BS6 fuel from April 2018. BS6 fuel is now available at all retail outlets of fuel, whether it's Indian Oil, BPCL, HPCL. There are 397 fuel pumps which are now compliant to BS6 fuel. These uh, fuel, BS6 fuel will lead to a cleaner emission or emission and which will help reduce pollution in the city of Delhi. The level of pollution is going very much high in there and it's really 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 difficult for a you know individual to you know, take a breath in such kind of environment. If government has taken such initiative I really really appreciate government. I think it's a step in the right direction and I really hope that it brings about the change that the government is expecting because pollution is becoming a uh, you know, very, very uh, critical issue uh, for Delhi especially. But industry experts say that uh, full benefit of BS6 fuel will only be reaped when vehicles compliant to BS6 are out on the roads. The OMCs or the oil marketing companies are now looking to expand BS6 fuel to NCR region outside Delhi as well as other metro cities of India. And that is something that Delhi will be gearing up for. But for now, we'll take a very short break. On the other side, Cambridge Analytica whistleblower testifies before British lawmakers, reveals on the data company's clients in India. We bring you his statement on the other side. Stay right there. We'll on to a developing story now. Former employee of Cambridge Analytica and whistleblower Christopher Wiley has said that the voter profiling firm has worked extensively in India and has offices and staff here as well. Appearing before a parliamentary panel in the United Kingdom, Wiley said, uh, also suggested rather, that the Congress party might have been a client of Cambridge Analytica. During the same session, data safety expert Paul Olivier, who has challenged Cambridge Analytica in the past, suggested that the company may have been working for someone who wanted the Congress to lose. Let's listen in. You focus on the world's biggest democracy with uh, lots and lots of elections all the time, uh, India, as being a, a prime source of business, wouldn't you? And you, you mentioned that they'd done quite a bit of work in India. Could you just describe what you're aware of? Um, I believe I believe their, their client was Congress, um, but I know that they, um, they've done all kinds of uh, projects, both regional. I don't think they've done an, I don't remember a national, national project, but I know regionally. I mean, India is. Different states. Uh, yeah, I mean, India is so big that, you know, one state can be, you know, as big as Britain. Mm. Um, uh, but they, they do have offices there, they do have staff there. Um, I believe I have some documentation on India, which I can also provide to the committee if, you, if that's, no, if that's something very, of yeah. interest. But very yeah. welcome. Yeah, great. Yeah. My understanding. Another country that doesn't need any tensions in being inflamed. Yeah. Yes. My understanding, relating back to the, the Romanian, uh, your predecessor, Dan yeah. Harrison, 
Um, so there are sto st stories that are starting to come out, and the one in India of his involvement when he died later in Ken uh, when he died in Kenya. So he was working for Congress, apparently, according to reports from India, but apparently he was really paid for by an Indian billionaire who actually wanted Congress to lose. So he was pretending to work for one party, but actually really paid underhand by someone else. That seems to be the reports that are coming out now from India. So definitely on the, all this, there needs to be some collaboration between Romanian, Kenyan, and Indian journalists to piece out what happened. Very interesting testimony there. But back home, law and IT minister Ravi Shankar Prasad has demanded an apology from Congress President Rahul Gandhi, referring to Cambridge Analytica whistleblower's suggestion that Congress may have used the firm's services. The minister said that the Congress stands exposed. Mr. Rahul Gandhi has been trying to divert attention. Today, he stands exposed. I demand that Congress party must apologize to the nation. We also demand Mr. Rahul Gandhi must apologize to the nation. No more false alibi will absolve the Congress party from a blatant lie which they spoke before the country that we have not used the services of Cambridge Analytica. Well, staying with action from the political theatre, latest in the battle for Karnataka. Now, the Election Commission has announced the date for Karnataka election. The state will vote in a single phase on the 12th of May, and the results will be announced on the 15th of May. Now, this announcement got mired in a controversy even before the Election Commission announced the poll date. BJP's IT cell chief Amit Malviya and Karnataka Congress's social media in charge Srivastava YB tweeted the dates. However, they got the counting dates wrong. Amit Malviya later deleted this tweet. Both of them have claimed that they picked up the dates from television reports. Meanwhile, Chief Election Commissioner O.P. Rawat has promised strict legal action and administrative action in this case. I am blaming the government and party. How they came to know? Because Central Election Commission is an independent body and before they giving all the details about the election date and everything, how the BJP came to know? It means that something is wrong in the Central Election Commission. Well, it is a secret matter. Uh, dates are not to be known in advance to any political party. So he's announcing it has uh, uh, hurt our party image. But who, what? how seriously the party views this, only the party president can decide. You should ask him. Meanwhile, West, West Bengal's Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee has stepped up her efforts to forge a national alliance with non-BJP and non-Congress parties ahead of the 2019 Lok Sabha elections and to fast-track this process. The Drinamul Congress Chief is currently holding a series of meetings in Delhi. CNN News 18's Maria Shakil, who has been tracking these developments, is here with the details. Uh, Maria, any clarity on by when we can expect some movement on this? After KCR gave the call for a federal front, a non-BJP, non-Congress front, and he particularly reached out to Mamata Banerjee. Mamata Banerjee is now in Delhi, and she has held very important meetings, and one is that of NCP Chief Sharad Pawar. Uh, she also held a meeting with uh, Sanjay Rawat of the Shiv Sena. There was also a meeting with RJD's leaders as well. So clearly, talks of a anti-BJP front is gaining ground and uh, Mamata Banerjee is essentially talking about how states uh, and re various regional parties in various states should forge alliances in those states and look at uh, how working out a formula to defeat the BJP. What will be the role of the Congress in this? So far, Mamata is of the opinion that this front should be largely of non-BJP and non-Congress parties. Um, Although she did say that she is in touch with the Congress chief, Rahul Gandhi, and as far as meeting with Sonia Gandhi is concerned, she will be doing that meeting as well. Uh, but clearly, it is Mamata Banerjee who is now trying to really galvanize and mobilize various opposition parties to come together and, and really find a common ground. The common ground here is to defeat the BJP. Uh, the call is like a formula that worked out in the state of Uttar Pradesh, where the BSP and the Samajwadi Party came together in the bipoles in Gorakhpur and Poolpur and defeated the BJP. Similar experiments should be made in other states just to defeat the BJP. Well, thanks a lot for that, Maria. Clearly, the poll season is well and truly here. That's all we have time for in this edition of India Business Hour. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.